ಓಮಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಖಾ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಹಾಫ್ ಮೈ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಬೇಸ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿರಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಹೂ ಇನ್ವೆಂಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬುಕ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಟಾರ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಆಸ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ teachings to us about distributing books he said a couple of things very specifically when we asked him about how to teach others to sell books one of the things he said was teach the devotees to be sincere because he then pointed to his heart the master within the heart will t- show them how to do it if for although i'm showing you a template today the main point is that you should be sincere and speak from your heart and people will get the message and also Krishna will teach you how to do it if you just practice and you try in that vein nonetheless if you have a template to work from it gives you a little confidence to start with It's just like when you're learning to play the saxophone and you have to learn uh, some basic scales and where the keys are and things like that and after you get good at that then you can start improvising so today's <coughs> template is uh, straightforward it's easy to follow we also have a card that shows the various steps and when you learn these steps and we'll go through them today so that you know what they are and how to present then you can even take this card with you if you're new and you're presenting to people and you say excuse me I'm new I'm a trainee in fact you put a little badge on that says trainee and he says don't mind I'm just trying this today I don't know how to do it but and you'll find that people become very open to that they'll say oh no no you go ahead I'll help you out you know and at the end when you ask for a donation you're of course so sure they they're very people are so nice you know they don't want to discourage you so even if you're a veteran you can use that technique uh <laughs> so how to sell a, a a book on its own merit especially today we'll be talking about the bhagavad gita and there's sufficient merit in our books that if you simply describe them sincerely anyone will buy so here are the various steps we'll read them together radar qualify trust the hand give a nutshell presentation show and tell compliment humor engage 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight simple steps ashtanga so the first is radar now when you get um detected by a police man who's uh, using a radar gun there's a basic technology through which there's a a beam that hits your vehicle and then bounces back to the machine itself and it tells how fast uh, you're going and <clears throat> in a similar way we we use radar in order to detect whether people are ripe fruits or unripe fruits and this you can use for this you can use the power of your hand so if you hold up your right hand you'll notice that there's a beam that just like the radar gun it will shoot out from the palm of your hand you never knew you were such powerful mystics did you and when it hits somebody else it will bounce off them and if you if you watch them you'll notice whether they're ripe fruit or unripe fruit okay so now point your radar at somebody and not all at me because i can't take it all at one time and i'll give you the mantra to activate it and then it'll shoot the beam are you ready hi hi now look at the person you just hit with your beam and what are they doing They're all smiling because you're in a room full of ripe fruits. <laughs> If you shoot somebody else on the street, they might e- not even look at you. Does that mean they're ripe or unripe? Unripe. And if they kind of smile a little bit, maybe they're in the middle somewhere. But you will get a reading, <clears throat> and it'll come back to you. So again, we're not trying to convince everybody, and that's not our job. We're only searching for the ripe fruits. This is the policeman doesn't pull over everyone. He or she only pulls over those who are speeding. So we we're, we're selecting by this. And in any crowded place, you 
you can get an anxiety because you think, well, how am I going to deal with this? Just deal with it individually. And I'll just start going like this to people. Hi, 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 hi. And you'll notice in some places that are very passionate, fewer people will, will respond. And places that where sattva gun is prevailing a little more, more people will respond. But they will respond. That's what living entities do. That's what they do for a living. They respond. That That's... Uh, a response. Response means that there's a pulse that's coming out. So you send a pulse, you get a pulse back. So it's a conscious contact to start with. And be very much aware of that in, in your select, selection process. So hand power and, and activate through the mantra. Hi. 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 Okay. Next thing is to qualify because people don't know why you're there and why they're particularly getting an object thrust into their hands. And if they don't know, then they, the confused mind usually says no. So one way to qualify people is uh, to tell them where you're from, which is polite, and then ask where they're from. So what I, what I would say when I'm outside of California is, California, where are you from? And if I'm inside California, I'll say, Bowling game, where are you from? Wherever you're from, you can uh, u utilize that and then ask somebody where they're from. Now, when they answer, then you can appreciate where they're from. And because wherever somebody's from is a worshipable place, like Ross, H. Ross Perot many years ago when he was running for president, it was revealed that when he became a multi-billionaire, he went back to his original home and he spent $2 million to to turn all the bricks around in his house because somebody had painted them. So, because it's a worshipable place, it's his house. So, if you just simply appreciate where somebody's from, like, hi, California, where are you from? Illinois, I love Illinois. Illinois, that's the home of the fighting line eye, right? And whatever, whatever you can say that's um, appreciative of their place. That's why you're giving them the book. That's the qualification. You're from Illinois? Fantastic. I'll show you one too. Say show. show. Say it louder. Show. Say it again. Show. Say it two more times. Show. Show. Yeah, what are we doing? We're showing. We're not giving. We're not selling. We are showing. And show is a, an innocuous term. It doesn't obligate you to anything. It's a simple thing. It's, it's, what we, it's what we all do in life. We like to show things to people. So the reason we're showing it to them because you're from Illinois. You're from Illinois? Fantastic. Illinois, I'm going to show you one too. So next thing is to trust the hand. Now I want you to look at this uh, iconic picture, which was taken about 15 years ago. Um, but you'll notice that lady's hand and the look on her face. Do you see her countenance? Her face is not saying, oh, I'm really into this, but look at the, what the hand's saying. The hand's saying, I don't care, I'll take it anyway. So you'll notice that oftentimes when you encounter people, that you'll say, oh, good, I'll show you one too, and their mind's going, don't do it. But the hand goes, no, I'll do it, because that's what hands do, they grab stuff. So if you just put the book out, If you notice that, it's a simple, it's a visceral reaction that if somebody hands you something, the hand will generally go for it because that's its dharma. It grabs stuff. So let it do its dharma and, and the hand will get purified and the, and the person will get purified too. So trust the hand and trust, the, trust Krishna also. If you hand it over, nothing bad's going to happen. Next thing is when you're handing the book over, Give them a reason to take it. Let their mind absorb something also. What's in it for them? So here's a mantra that works quite universally, although there are many, many mantras, and Navina and others gave us some very nice ones this morning. Here's one that you can try. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Everyone say. Two more times. Two more times. Good. And it's helpful to have that right on the tip of your mind because when you start dealing with live people, your mind will be in a different state than it is now sitting peacefully in your own environment. 
And if you've practiced that and you have a mantra ready, when you're handing the book over, you can say, books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. And you'll notice that he took the book. And now, as I'm handing the book over, the book's making an arc, and it's on its way, right? Here comes the delivery, Federal Express. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Try it again. Books on yoga and meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Do you notice I'm saying it while I'm handing the book over? Because that helps them to understand there's something this in it for me, and it, it, it helps to align the hand with the mind. Because even if the hand's into it, if the mind isn't into it, as soon as they get the book in their hand, then the mind can overrule and they'll go, hey, take it back. So you're giving them an excuse uh, why they should take a look at it while you're handing it over get free from stress. That's an offer. Now, uh, one of the ways in which uh, one communicates effectively in any circumstance, but especially here, is by asking questions because questions are the answer. Make a question mark with, with your fingers. Now, what does that resemble? A hook. So a hook can uh, drag the conversation in the way that you want it to go, and it also resembles a tennis racket. So it also puts the ball back in their court. So if they ask something or say something that is either uh, leading things in the wrong direction or a question you can't answer, you can answer a question with a question. Use your tennis racket or hook, either to pull the conversation in the direction you want it to go or hit it back into their court. Don't try to answer things you don't know how to answer. And if you want a, a generic way to do that, if someone asks you something that you either don't know how to answer or you don't want to answer, you can just say, how do you mean that? So ask me a question. Any question? How do you mean that? Like, it, you know, anything that anybody asks you in any circumstance, you can say, how do you mean that? And they go, then they'll have to redefine it. They, well, how do you mean, how do I mean that? You just hit the ball back at them. You know, it's like, how do you mean that? Like, I mean it like, you know, what, what city are you from? Oh, okay. That, but with any kind of question, are you a Hindu? How do you mean that? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I mean that. It's like, oh, okay. Well, that's all right then. Um, so books on yoga meditation that show you how to get free from stress. And as soon as the book touches their hand, then a question comes out. Because the questions, questions are the answer. They're also hooks and they're also tennis rackets. So as soon as the book goes in their hand, you ask them a question to control the conversation. And that is, you've heard of stress before, right? Yes, you've heard of stress? OK. Whether they say yes or no, it does, it's inconsequential. Because the, the next follow-up is, uh, really, you don't look stressed. You look spiritual. So. If some, some people, most people say, yeah, I've heard of stress. Of course I've heard of stress. And then we say, really, you don't look stressed. You look spiritual. Or some people say, no, I'm not stressed at all. And say, I know, I can tell. You don't look stressed at all. You look spiritual. Now, there's a, there's a, a very powerful uh, implication in this statement, you look spiritual. They are spiritual. They've forgotten and I also deal with people in a materialistic way because I'm looking at their body. I can't see their soul. But the Sri Shapanishad says that you should systematically see people as spiritual, anupashchiti. And that means when you say you look spiritual, what happens is they change their mindset and they start thinking of themselves as spiritual, which is quite natural because they are. So if you get up in the morning and walk out your door and someone comes up to you and goes, oh, you look tired. How do you feel? You start going like, I guess I am tired. Or if, someone, if you wake up in the morning and someone looks at you and goes, you walk out your door and they go, you look terrible. How do you feel? Terrible. The rest of the day you're thinking, God, I feel terrible. And if somebody comes up to you and looks at you and goes, you look spiritual. How do you feel? You start and start and feel, and you'll notice it, it happens in an instant when you tell people this, you look spiritual. They'll, they'll start, uh, they transform suddenly in front of your eyes and they, go, they start to, they achieve self-realization within a half a second just by you telling them, you look, you look spiritual. And they go, oh my God, I forgot Krishna, I came from the spiritual world. You know, all these thoughts start going through their mind just by this one statement. 
So now you bring another question. It's like, what's your secret? Everyone say that. And if you don't learn anything else, if you don't remember anything else today, well, of course you can't forget because you have these cards, but if you remember this one question and you ask that to people when you're distributing books, that you'll notice that it's the most powerful of all the questions you can ask them. And the reason is because there's a dynamic when we're out distributing books, and that is that we're trying to intervene in their lives. It's, it's just by context. We're walking up to them, they're going in their own direction, and we walk up and say, hey, come over here, I'm going to change your life. And people don't like to have their lives changed. And there's a subtlety there where they're thinking, like, why are you trying to tell me anything? And you'll notice that's one of the main reasons that people beg off. And they say, you know, like, leave me alone, or I don't want to read this, or I don't need to read it, or I don't want to give any money. The reason is there's a stubbornness there. They're like, I'm okay. Why are you telling me I'm not? Because basically we are saying you should read this because it'll, it'll make you better. So now, uh, when I'm asking them, what's your secret, we're changing the relationship suddenly. Within an instant, now they're becoming my teacher. I'm looking up to them because, number one, they are spiritual, and they just recognize that, and they recognize it. And number two, I want to know what their secret is. How did they get that way? And that, me that makes me their disciple, and they now become the guru. And this they very much appreciate. All living beings do. So, what's your secret? Now, they'll start thinking of their secret, and it takes them a second. So people in the mode of ignorance will say, I smoke a lot of marijuana. People in the mode of passion will say, I work out every day. People in the mode of goodness will say, uh, I meditate and I read the Bhagavad Gita. And um, you'll notice a variety of answers. And then a portion of people, at least 30%, will say, I have no idea. And then you'll have to suggest something for them, say, oh, you must come from a good family. And if they say, no, I don't, most 10% uh, of people say, no, I don't come from a good family. Other people will accept that. Uh, the other people, you could say, you must just be a natural. And they'll accept that. Okay, so let them be spiritual and let them have a secret. And if they don't have one, fill it in for them. Okay, so far? Say yes. yes. Okay, next is you take the book back. You just gave them the book, but in essence, basically, you're taking back their book just to show them their book. And now comes show and tell. So show and tell means, here, I'll show you really quick. How fast are we telling them? Really Say really quick five times. Really quick. That's how, how fast are we showing them? Really and the reason is, they're thinking, is this a Bhagavatam class? Or do I have to be here forever? Am I going to be converted here on the spot? What's going to happen? And you're just saying, everything's really quick. This is going to happen so fast you won't even believe it. It's really quick, really quick, really quick. I'm just going to show you. So here's a few things that you show them that are in and on the book. On the back cover of your Bhagavad Gita, you'll find some names. What are they? On this book, it says Thoreau, Emerson, and Gandhi. Thoreau, Emerson, Gandhi. I add in a few more people who have read Bhagavad Gita that are, are well known. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Albert Einstein, the Beatles, and uh, Tupac Shakur. We haven't updated this, but Tupac was a big fan of the Bhagavad Gita. He was a philosophical person, and he's well known in uh, some cultures. So good to add in a little bit of everybody. And if you're dealing with another culture, then you can add in names that people are more familiar with. Uh, just as uh, SKP was explaining, you know, go with their culture. So all you have to do is just drop the names as if you're taking them and throwing them in, up to the air. You don't have to explain each one, just tell them. And, and you'll notice that their mind starts catching on those names. The next thing is to open the book and say, show them the Sanskrit writing, which is very beautiful in itself. And you'll say, mm, can you read this? And what will they say? 99.999% of the time they'll say no, and then they say, oh, I was just testing you. And that leads to the next point, but this has been translated into English over 400 times, and now you're turning to the front of the book, instead of, out of all the translations, this is the most popular in universities. Now you find in the front of your book, a list of universities, some of which at the bottom of the page are very well known. Like here we have University of Southern California. Have you all heard of USC? 
And also you'll find down here Georgetown University. You know the Hoyas, right? Okay, so we've got, uh, all you have to do is again drop names. You're pulling them out of a hat, you know USC? Yeah. You've heard of Georgetown University? Yeah. Okay, that's all you have to do. Now the next thing is we're still showing and we turn to the changing bodies. So get good at finding this because you've got to get there fast because how fast are you showing them? Really quick, really quick, really quick. So here we have a picture, and when you're showing them, you hold it up like this so they can see it very well and say, listen, we start here, we end up here, we're all just passing through. And then you can ask them a question, where are you in all this? Wait, where are you? Sir? Come up. Let the record show that Wade has identified himself as being on this part of the continuum. And people will look at that and, you know, it gets their mind engaged. They get to participate a little bit and show where they're from. Okay, and the next page you can show and tell. This one shows the sage, and uh, the sage is looking at the various entities in the world. And here, here's another mantra. A self-realized person treats everyone with respect. Repeat. Because he or she sees God, or the Spirit, within everyone's heart. So when you show them that, and you tell that a, a spiritual person respects everybody, they, they like that point very much. And the next comes another question, because you don't want to go too long without asking a question, because a question holds everything together. So the next thing you ask is, you've heard of karma, right? Yes. Have you heard of karma? What does it mean to you? That's another question. So I asked one question, she answered. I'm asking another, what does it mean to you? I'll give her the microphone, this is important. We want to hear this answer. What comes along and goes along? Now here's my answer. Whoa, what a great explanation. Okay, so I want you to practice that. Whenever uh, you're going to ask me uh, if I've heard of karma, and then ask me what it means to me, and then when I give my answer, and I don't don't matter, it doesn't matter what I say. I want you to go like this. Whoa! What a great explanation. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, give him the microphone. He'll ask me. <clears throat> Have you heard of karma? Yes. What does it mean to you? Well, it was like. You know, rabbits and butterflies and energies and like things go up and down and like it's freaky, man. <laughs> Whoa. Come on, what a great Come on now. No. no, you don't have it yet. You don't have it yet. Okay, I'm going to ask you, you say the same answer. I say, you've heard of karma, right? Um, yeah. Use the mic. What does it mean to you? Uh, what goes around comes around. Whoa. I really like the way you put things. If more people in the world thought like you, it would be a better world to live in. So you really got to lean into it, okay? Ask me again about karma. You've heard of karma, right? Yeah. What does it mean to you? Well, like, it's just mystical. It's weird. It's hard to explain. It's like stuff happens. You know what I mean? Oh, great <laughs> Exactly. So this is a, a, a time in your presentation to add a little energy to it and to appreciate them. After all, they're your guru. They're teaching you. You ask them what their secret is for being spiritual, and now you're asking them questions, and when they give you answers, you really appreciate them heavily, okay? You can't, you can't overemphasize when you do this. Go into your bozo zone. That means you go like more than you th thought was necessary, okay? Whoa! What a great explanation. Okay, that will get them ready for the next part. And we say this, this is a mantra you can use at any time in your presentation. It goes well in this part, but what's your secret? And this mantra, this will get you through practically any presentation. So please repeat after me. If more people in the world thought like you, the world would be a better place to live. So when people bring up things, you can use this mantra. 
Okay, so the next one is, um, I show them karma. I said, look, generosity breeds generosity, violence breeds violence. And I show them this uh, cow with a man's head and man with the cow's head. And if you feel squeamish about this picture, you can skip it. And then the next part is humor. So we ask people another question. What do you do professionally? Say it. They say, I'm a civil engineer, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm a dancer. And then I show this picture of the yogi with the soul leaving his, uh, through his head. I say, really, this guy used to be a civil engineer. <laughs> or, yeah, this guy used to be a Sunday school teacher. Or, yeah, this guy used to be a dancer. And then, what do they do? They, they laugh at 50% of the time. And the other 50% of the time, they say, really? And then you say, no, not really. And then they go, ha, ha, ha. And just as they're laughing, that's when you hand the book back. And so say, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and now as I'm handing the book back, I have something more to say as I'm handing it. I say, we don't sell it like in a bookstore. Now watch as I'm handing back. You say, ha, ha, ha. We don't sell it like in a bookstore. So now that's important as I'm saying this. Now watch the timing. As I'm handing the book back, I'm saying, we don't sell it. That's the words they want to hear. That's when the book's halfway to their hand. We don't sell it. And they're going, oh, okay, hand, go ahead. You can take it. Hand's going, can I take it? And you go, we don't sell it. And you go, all right, take it. We don't sell it like at a bookstore. We just ask for a donation. Now comes the, uh, the uh, rest of the mantra. They have the book in their hand now. And you say, we don't need the money. Watch me. Use your hands. We don't need the money. The only reason we ask that it's an ancient tradition, when you give something in return for spiritual knowledge, it connects you to the previous teachers who have passed it down, work with me now, passed it down over many generations, and allows you to enter deeply within the knowledge and then point to the book. Okay, let's try it again. We don't need the money. Just uh, repeat after me. We don't need the money. The only reason we ask, it's an ancient tradition. When you give something in return for spiritual knowledge, it connects you to the previous teachers who have passed it down over many generations and allows you to enter deeply within the knowledge. I'm going to try it again. You all do it. Uh, just read it off the script, but use your hand gestures. Ready? One more time. One more time. Okay, then um, you can always say, if you like, you can always say how much it costs. It costs $10 to print, ship, and anything you give over that is a donation. Or you can just let them give whatever they want to give. You can go either way. And you can practice both ways. When you say it costs $10 to print, to ship, uh, then um, it gives them something for their mind to shoot for. Because oftentimes the reason people don't give donations is because they're thinking, I don't know what to give. So if you give them something to shoot for, you say $10, $10, then they'll give more than $10. You say you give anything you give over that as a donation, or they'll give less than that, and they'll say, is this okay? But at least it gives them the range. Or you can just leave it open to them, e either way. And a few comebacks, they say, I already know all about this. We say, that's great, I could tell by looking at you. Okay, so I say, I already know all about this. Or I say, I know, that's why I picked you out. I could tell. You look like somebody who knows all, everything about everything. And then, I'm a blank. I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian. Okay, so, oh great, I'll show you this one. So now, 
when I hand you this book, you hand it back as you'll say you're a Christian. Yeah, we don't, um, books on yoga and meditation shows how to get free from stress. You say, I know, okay, hand it back. He's a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian. Okay, here. Sorry about that. Here you go. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm just using it as a replacement. I'm not handing them the same book. I'm going to hand them a different book. But whatever they say, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, don't force them to take the book. Once, they've, once their hand starts rejecting it, once they've rejected it, take it. Respect their rejections, respect their objections. Always uh, honor their objections and honor their rejection. Don't um, uh, resist, because if it, whatever you resist will grow. It'll just make them more determined to resist it. So as I'm handing it, and, they, and I notice they're resisting, their hand's already coming back, I just take it right back. Go with the flow. This is uh, the martial arts or Aikido of book distribution. Take it back, go with their flow, and then hand them another one. They will take a different book. And then you start giving context. You say, yeah, uh, one of the, this is one of the times to use th this uh, mantra that if there were more people like you in the world, it would be a better place to live. Like, uh, I was in front of the um, museum in Toronto, and I handed the book. Someone said, oh, I'm a Christian. And so I gave him a different book. I said, if there were more people like you in the world, more people of faith, it would be a better world to live in. You're what's keeping the world alive. And he, he took the book. So just replace it with something else. Are you selling this? Anybody ever ask you this? Here's the answer. We refuse to sell it. It's too valuable. We just take a donation. And be adamant. They say, are you selling this? We refuse to sell it. It's too valuable. We only take a donation. Okay, how much should I donate? We try to keep it under 100, but in your case, we're thinking about making an exception. <laughs> Okay, so uh, when you get the donation, uh, then you teach them the mom mantra. You can ask them this question, do you believe in the power of prayer? Say it. They say uh, yes, and you move on. They say no, and you say perfect. I'll teach you a mantra instead. So do you believe in the power of prayer? Yes. No? Perfect. I'll teach you a mantra. Uh, do you believe in the power of prayer? Say yes. Perfect. Repeat after me. This is a beautiful prayer. It's meant to wake up love for God in your heart. You show them the mantra card and you say, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama. Hare Rama. 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 Rama, Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare, Hare. Hare Hare. And then you give them prasadam. So they get the book, they give a donation, they learn the mantra, and then you give them prasadam at the end. And then you get your, their contact information if they're up for that. And then you thank them for taking their valuable time. So the way you do that is to say, thank you for taking your valuable time. And if it's appropriate, you shake their hand and say, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Leave them with a good impression. And our prime directive is what? Very good. So um, I'm going to just go through the steps really quick. And then what we're going to do is stand up and practice going through these steps these cards you can pass out. Actually, we'll pass them out when you stand up. And you're going to go through one rep as you're facing each other where one person presents and uses this template. And then uh, stop. We'll see if there's a couple of questions and then we'll go the other way, okay? Are you ready? Say yes. yes. Okay. Here are the steps. Radar. Radar. Qualify. Qualify. Trust the hand. Give a nutshell presentation. Show and tell. Compliment. Humor. Engage. First thing is radar. You use your hand. Hi, 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 hi. You meet a ripe fruit. Then you go, hey, I'm from California. Where are you from? Or you say, I'm from Chennai. Where are you from? And they're like, I'm from California. California, I love California. The, um, when I was just in Tokyo, I was... Everybody's practically Japanese in Tokyo. I walk up to people on the street and I go, Are you Japanese? <laughs> you go, I'm Japanese. Go, Fantastic. This is for you. So when you qualify them, it's like, I'm from California. Where are you from? They, uh, they tell you where you're from. Just appreciate the place they're from, wherever it is. I'm from? Connecticut. Connecticut? 
Bulls Bear people from Connecticut. Fantastic. I love Connecticut. This is from San Francisco to Connecticut. That's the whole thing. It's the whole context where you're from. I trust the hand. You put it in your hand, but while you're handing the book over, as it's making its arc, books on yoga meditation that show you how to get free from stress. Bring out your hook. You've heard of stress before, right? They say yes. You say, really? You don't look stressed. You look spiritual. Here comes the biggest hook of all. What's your secret? Say it. Yes. And now take the book back for show and tell here. I'll show you how fast. Yes. On the back, we're just name dropping. Thoreau, Gandhi, Emerson, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Einstein, the Beatles, and Tupac Shakur. Don't forget Tupac. Okay. Now show them the Sanskrit inside and say, can you read this? And they say, no. I was just testing you. Don't worry, it's all been translated in English. And over 400 translations, and out of all of them, these have become the most popular in universities. Now what are you showing them? The universities in front of the book. You can show them USC, Georgetown University. Next, you show them a picture, changing bodies, and say, look, we start here, we end up there, we're just passing through. Where are you in all this? Next, That's the next question. They show you, and then you say, um, here, look at this. A self-realized person treats everyone with... That's the key word, because he or she sees God within everyone's heart. Next, another question. You heard of karma, right? What does it mean to you? Whoa! I love the way you put things. What a great explanation. If there were more people like you in the world, it would be a better place to live. Now, uh, I, I ask them, what do you do professionally? Software engineer? What kind of software? Computer, what kind of computer science? What kind of hardware? What kind of chips? What kind of microchips? What brand? What? Broad Broadcom? Listen. This guy used to be in Broadcom. <laughs> The more specific you can make it, like if somebody says, you know, I'm a teacher, what kind of teacher? I, I, I teach uh, zoology. Get out of here! This guy used to teach zoology. <laughs> That's when they laugh, and as soon as they laugh, then you hand the book back. When you hear the ha ha ha, that's when you know you're handing the book back. And you're handing the book back, and as you hand it back again, as the book's making its arc, you say, we don't sell it like in a bookstore. We just ask for a donation. Are you ready for the next part? Let's do it together. We don't need the money. The only reason we ask, it's an ancient tradition. When you give something in return for spiritual knowledge, it connects you to the previous teachers who have passed it down over many generations and allows you to enter deeply within the knowledge. And then uh, you could say it costs us $10 to print and ship and store. Uh, anything you give over that is a donation. And then they give a donation. And then um, you can, at the uh, next point, give them the Maha Mantra. You believe in the power of prayer? Say yes. yes. I'll teach you this beautiful prayer meant to wake up love for God in your heart. You teach them the Maha Mantra. Then you say, this is for being so nice. And you give them some prasadam. Do we have prasadam to give out today? Yes. yes. Say yes. Malini? Yes. Malini? Yes. Say yes. Okay. All right. So then you give them prasadam. That's self-explanatory, and then get their contact information. And lastly, thank them for taking their valuable time and say it's been a pleasure meeting you and shake their hand. Our prime directive is? Okay, so now um, to, uh, we want to see how organized you are, how efficient you are. So uh, stand up in the open space back there and face each other. Find one partner facing and on one side, someone should have a Bhagavad Gita in their hand. On the other side, someone should have nothing in their hands. And the world record so far in getting set up is 60 seconds. See if you can beat it. And Marcus said go. Do what you have to do to organize the room to make it available. Thirty seconds. 
25. 20 seconds. 10. Move things out of the way. If something's in your way, move it out. 5 seconds. 4. 3. 2. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Say yes. Vinda, Monisha, can you come here? Here. Make sure everybody who's got a book gets one of these. What happened? If you're ready, raise your hand. If you're ready, raise your hand. If you're ready, raise your hand and say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Now, okay, look over here just for a second. Now watch how I'm standing. Look over here. Okay. Now here's, here's what I see many devotees doing. They got the book out like this, and they're walking down the street. People see him coming from a mile away, and they go, okay, cross the street before we get to that guy. But what you want to do is keep the book out of your hands. So they, they're thinking, oh, the guy can't hurt me. He doesn't have any books in his hands. You can either keep it in your arm like this, or you keep it on the table. Or you keep it in your book bag. It's not visible. It's not in your hand like this, like you're trying to attack somebody with it. And also, best is to hang back. Because you're actually looking for the ripe fruits. You don't have to ch chase after them. So you see how I'm standing? Stand like this. You've got to be cool as a cucumber in an icebox. And stand back. And then from here, you're high, 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 high. Don't be chasing after you. Go, high, high, high. Just stay back and then watch and see who's, see who's out there. See who looks at you. And once you see them respond, then you can use your mantras to continue the conversation. Okay, Do you all, uh, are you all ready to go? Whose book is this? Oh, yours. You got two. Okay, so don't give them any trouble. You, you who are receiving, you're not meant to give them obstacles. Don't give them, you know, curveballs. Give them uh, straightforward, and if they forget something, help them through. What you're trying to do right now is just get one repetition of saying what's on the card. Go through it as quickly as possible, and just try to do the reps. Don't think about it, just do it. And you help them go through it if they forget something, so you go through it fast. You just take a couple minutes, okay? Is everybody ready? Yes. Say yes. On your mark. Get set, distribute.
Hare Krishna. When you finish one repetition, then stop. Don't go the other way yet. Did you finish one rep? If you finish one rep, raise your hand. If you can hear me, 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 raise your hand. How many of you have not finished one rep that is going one way? Raise your hand. Okay, take, take one more minute and finish. Okay, before we go the other way, and if you haven't finished, that's okay, just stop for one second. Before we go the other way and have the other person distribute, then uh, I just want to see if you have any questions or any hang-ups that you're running into. Questions, hang-ups? Yes. Like when we're um, talking about the Bhagavad Gita, we're the, the philosophy, we are not touching anything on the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita. Well, the only thing that uh, we are, from the book, that we are telling is about the the reincarnation, the concept. We are starting here, we are ending here, and we are passing through this, and where do you, uh, and we are starting here, we are ending here, and we are passing through this, where do you, you know, where do you, uh, where, do you where are you in this? So that is the only thing that we are talking from the book, from the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, it's a very deep concept that most people very much appreciate. Although we've seen the changing bodies many, many times, when you show it to other people, it's a revelation. They see it for the first time. And that's one of the uh, very important aspects of Bhagavad Gita is we're on a continuum. So basically, yes, we're giving the essence of the philosophy. We're also bringing up karma as well. So these, ki these couple of things are, are giving the basic philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, and you don't need to give them a lot more than that in order for them to appreciate and take the book. There's no harm in teaching other things, but I suggest you learn this template because it will work everywhere, every time to all the people that you meet, and you'll be very satisfied with it. And after you learn to do the, use this template, which flat out works, then you can innovate in any other way that you like, and you can start bringing up more intricate philosophy and see if they appreciate it. Okay? All right, any other things before you go the other way? Yes? So, we are not allowed to speak our own realizations on Bhagavad Gita, Maharaj? Yes, you may speak all your realizations uh, to the whole world. I just recommend that you learn this template and then um, work off the template to, to innovate after that. Because once you have a basic track and you know how it works, then you can start inserting things. Like learning playing an instrument. First you learn your scales, then you can start playing jazz and everything else. Okay? So let's go the other way, and if you haven't finished, then finish up going one way and then go back the other way, and we're going to take five more minutes. So just uh, get the rep in and make sure you practice at one time because we're going to um, go out and um, we're going to touch the pavement. We're not going to distribute any books, but if you feel like it after you touch the pavement, then you can try doing this if you feel like it. On your mark, get set, go.
Hare Krishna. If you're not finished with going both ways, then uh, raise your hand if you still need a little more time. Two people? Okay, 30 more seconds. Finish up. And then uh, everyone else can start sitting down. Uh, take your seats back here again. And if you're, if you're still in the middle of your presentation, just finish it up while everyone else is sitting down. Somebody collect the Bhagavad Gita's from everybody and put them back in the box. Srivatsa, help collect the Bhagavad Gita's. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare Gopre Manande Haribo. Now we'll just take a few um, questions or reflections you have from the presentation. Places where you thought there was a gap or you weren't sure about what to do. Yes, Srivatsa Prabhu. Srivatsa. In the past, sometimes when I tell people about um, how um, self-realized people are able to see God in everyone, and they're atheists, they start challenging the philosophy, and they start coming right at you. Then uh, I put in that presentation spirit. So um, oftentimes, if you, if you eliminate the word God from your vocabulary when you're talking to people in, in the Bay Area and at some other places. In Illinois, it'll work okay. You can say God all day long if people take the book. But in, in California, uh, generally, if you say God, then that's a buzzword that um, irritates them. So this, this um, self-realized person treats everybody with respect because she sees the spiritual value of everyone. And to just change God to spiritual. And that, that should usually be acceptable because that can even be accommodated uh, sometimes by atheists. They can justify the idea of being spiritual as being... Um, pardon? Oh, no, what was it? Yeah, mindful, something like that. Yeah. What else? Any other points? Yes? You got to use the mic. Uh, suppose when we get some mothers or, you know, parents of children. So can we emphasize that that will help your kids? Um, Bhagavad Gita yes. will help your kids. Yes, you may. And just after this, somebody find some WD-40 and put it on the hinges of that door, please, before it's too late. Um, yes, Prabhu? Was this about the WD-40 or somebody? Okay, go ahead. Um, Get him a mic back there. I, got a, I had a question, Prabhu, when uh, doing the one-to-one -one session here. Yes. So I was like, when I was showing the picture uh, of a yogi, like he was also a software engineer. And then he said, what happened to this person after this? I mean, who said that? He asked me. You don't give him arms, to, don't give him trouble. <laughs> Nobody says that. Everyone laughs. 50% of the people laugh, and then the other 50% of the people say, really? And then you say, not really, and then they laugh. 
it's funny. And people get it. It's really funny. So uh, don't worry about that. And also, don't worry about special cases. Everyone has some idea in their mind of some special case that comes up. They're one in a thousand or one in a hundred. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're looking for the general uh, presentation, and sometimes people have objections. They'll fall into, fall into a particular category. You'll learn how to deal with those things. But um, those are very s uh, specific, special things that somebody made up just to throw you off, um, they're not that important. But in general, the principle is if, somebody's, if somebody gives an objection, then honor the objection. Appreciate it. Like if, if uh, somebody says, uh, I mean, what's a common objection? I don't have time or something like that. It's like, yeah, I can appreciate that. You look like a very productive person. You're probably really busy, right? You know, I'm honoring the objection rather than saying, no, 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 yeah, you should take some time or something like that. Then they'll resist it more. Anything else? Yes, Peru. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, so we saw that there are four, four color plates uh, that we can show. One is the changing bodies, uh, then uh, a self-realized person seeing everyone with respect, then uh, the law of karma as well as the man meditating. So uh, in while uh, speaking to one particular person, it, it may get time consuming if we try to show all four of them. So, which ones are most important? How do we uh, make out which will have most the important impact? is the changing bodies and also just asking about karma. You only have to actually show them one color plate. If you, if you show them, say, look, we're passing through, life's like a quick journey, right? And then after that, you just say, you've heard of karma. They say yes, and you say, what does it mean to you? It says, what goes around comes around. They go, what, what an, you're amazing. If more people thought like you, it would be a better world to live in. What do you do professionally? You can cut right to that. And also, if you walk up to somebody and you show them the Bhagavad Gita, and they say, Bhagavad Gita, I'm looking for this. You know, how much is it? And he was like, hold on a second. I've got to do my thing. Now, uh, and you start going through the whole thing. No, just as soon as you see daylight, go for it. Uh, you know, halfway through the thing, so, so how much, you know, are you selling it? And if we, we won't sell it. We refuse to sell this. It's too valuable. We just take a donation. And we don't need the money. The only reason you ask, when you give something, and meanwhile, they're digging in their pocket, they're giving, you don't have to then, you know, drag out the rest of your presentation. Uh, use, use your common sense. This is, uh, it's one uh, complete presentation but it can be parsed. You can break it into pieces and, and present it in any way that you see fit. And that's where the genius comes in. But at least it gives you a track. Because when you get out there and there's live bullets flying and people are uh, going every which way, uh, your mind kind of goes a little haywire. What do I do now? And I see devotees all the time. They learn the presentation and they get out on the street and they start doing something else completely different. I recommend at least when you get out there, try to do this all the way through until you get it down one rep. And that's when I guarantee that you're going to sell the book. I don't guarantee it if you make up your own stuff. Don't come crying back to me that it doesn't work. I was like, what doesn't work? All the stuff you made up. Just follow this. <laughs> you follow this and I promise you, you'll sell Bhagavad Gita's out there and people will take them. Do it just like I said and it'll work. And, and then you'll start to see why it works. And, and then you can start innovating and changing it, doing whatever you want, uh, and you'll be off on your own. Okay? Otherwise, you can just stick to this, and you'll just sell books day after day after day. And when that gets boring, you can try something else. Okay? Yes. Two more, and then we'll go out. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, when we are showing it to Indians, usually some of them... Oh, say, yes. Thanks for bringing that up. So with Indians, I wanted to point out that I don't show them a book because it's an insult to their intelligence. So, <laughs> so uh, I mean, it's like if I stood in, in America and started selling Bibles and say, Here, here's the Bible, you know, like it's... Uh, people are like, what are you talking about? I already know the Bible. And so with Indians, when you thrust a book at them, they, they're taking it as you're trying to... Um, bring them back to something they have guilt about that they're not following anyway. And it gets really complicated in their minds. So don't, don't offend them. Don't complicate their lives. What I do when I meet Indians is I don't hand them a thing. I just stand there and talk to them and I tell them what we're doing and I acknowledge the fact that they know more than me. That's the, a standard principle with anybody. They're the guru. I'm just explaining what they already know. That's the psychology. And with Indians, I just tell them, like, you know... 
As you know better than I, the Bhagavad Gita solves the problems of life from a spiritual level. I'm not handing it to them. And I say, but what we're doing is we're making Bhagavad Gita available to people all over the world. And not only in English, but also in Russian and Japanese and Chinese. And we're setting up centers to teach Bhagavad Gita to help people all over the world. So what we're doing out here is a fundraiser. And for those who already know about Bhagavad Gita like you, your mother knows Bhagavad Gita, your grandmother memorized the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we just ask for money. We just ask for a donation. And you didn't hand them anything, so it's not tit for tat. You're not giving back for something. You're just telling them what you're doing and saying, then uh, we, we ask you for donation. It's a fundraiser. And Indians, when you do that, they'll be very happy to give you a donation. They'll give you, they'll give you lots of money. And then after they give the donation, then you can pull out the book and say, here, and by the way, this is for you. And they'll be very pleased to take more. So even when I go to doors and I meet Indians, unless I'm selling sets of Bhagavatams, uh, I resist from handing them things because that's what ruins it for them. It becomes a mental block. Does that help? Indians are different. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. This is different. It's a cultural thing. Yes. Usually, uh, I, whenever I see Indians, I usually try to show as if kids are trying to present and encourage them. So they are also thinking, okay, let me encourage the kid to present Bhagavad Gita. In that process, they're learning about Bhagavad Gita and then they, they take Bhagavad Gita as well. So. Okay, that's nice. That's also very innovative and a genius that's come from Krishna. Uh, uh, how much uh, eye contact of that person is important in selling the book? Like eye contact. Sometimes when we present uh, Gita, they are saying some uh, something else. They are seeing time. They are seeing. So, um, do you, uh, you, you should be aware of that. If there's if they look at their watch, that's a real sign that you should cut to the chase. So that means um, you know if, if you're talking to somebody, you say really quick and say. And they look at their watch and you say, oh, yeah. so I'll just finish up right now because I think you have to go. And they'll go, yeah, I got to go. And so I go, okay, we don't sell it. We just take a donation. Boom, just finish right there. So be very aware of, of what their body language is and how they're, how they're moving. Then one, two. I was just thinking that, um, is it okay? Well, like many times when we see Indians, we tell them uh, not to just take one. We talk to them, talk to them about Mokul Gita. Yes, um, always selling know, so bunches so of bananas. bananas. Yeah. Yes. Um, Advaita gave me this example, and I think um, I have a question. Like when they at the last part they say engage donation, right? But engage donation. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but what if they say in the middle, "I don't want the book"? Well, then they don't want the book. That's okay. You can take it back. And. Um, the reason it says engage and then has the donation, the reason we're asking for donations is uh, we don't need the money. That's a fact. That's why we're saying that. We don't need the money. Uh, Krishna will supply money in, in any which way in order for us to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. Um, the reason we ask is, in the Gita, Krishna says, don't give this to somebody who's not devoted or austere. So how are you going to tell? And if you ask for donation, they give something in return, then that's an austerity. And it also shows a little bit of devotion. Also, if they give their undivided attention, but they don't have any money at the end, that's okay too. They gave their attention. They paid attention. That's why we use that phrase. And then you can use your discretion and say you can keep it anyway. What we don't want to do is give it to people who aren't interested in it. We want to find good homes. And generally, when somebody gives something in return, anything, then it, it makes them more attached to the book because they gave something in exchange. And your specific question was, if they say, no, I don't want the book, then uh, just take it back. Always honor their objection. And if the energy is coming back at you, take it. Don't try to force it on them because it won't stay. It'll just build up even more. You can always, if they give the book back, as I mentioned before, if they hand this one back, just without saying anything, just hand them the next size. You can give them a Sri Shapanishad or something else. I had a guy, I was in Hong Kong, and I was down by the, um, the wharf, and some guy, he was, he was very cynical, but I kept showing him. And I showed him one book, he handed it back, I showed him another book, I showed him another book, and because they were different books, he kept taking them in his hand. And I got to the seventh book, and he finally just reached in his pocket and gave a donation. 
And so you'll find that um, oftentimes this will work. But if someone just says no and they're not interested, leave them with a good impression. Thank them for taking their valuable time. Our goal isn't to sell a book to every person. It's to make a positive interaction with them and leave them with a good impression. So if they want to get away, let them get away clean and uh, leave them with a, a strong impression that you cared about them, not about winning in the, in the transaction. You, you didn't have to win the transaction to be their friend. Does that make sense? Does that help? Okay. Yeah, let them go. And what you'll find is that keeps the atmosphere clean. And you'll be in a nice, blissful state of mind because you're detached. Because you're thinking, Krishna will send me the people. I don't have to convince every person. If somebody rejects it, that's fine too. Just don't, don't grab onto that rejection energy. Let it go. And what will happen then is all kinds of um, miraculous things will start happening. You'll see the miracle. Two more and then we better go, huh, Malini? Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So generally we have seen that Western count is fast moving. So I have seen devotees uh, to attract them. They say, oh, nice haircut, man. Okay, so... Nice what? Uh, nice haircut or nice uh, hat. Yeah. Or, I mean, something like that to attract. But generally they don't... Uh, we, when you say hi, generally they don't stop. They just move ahead because the crowd is moving. So Generally they don't stop, but uh, you'll notice that there's a ratio that do. Okay. That's the whole point. It's, it's, the point isn't if you say hi, everyone's going to stop. That's not what I said. What I said was you're selecting out of the crowd the ones that uh, when you shoot your radar, uh, I, I specifically mentioned when the policeman, highway patrolman is shooting his radar gun, he doesn't get everybody. He gets one out of a thousand. So when you're standing down on the street or wherever you are and you say hi, 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 everyone's going to go by except for the ones you want to talk to. And they're going to look at you and go, hi. And, and like, they're open. They're ripe fruits. That's, that's when you start talking to them. Yeah, I understood, Maharaj. But uh, I have seen also that uh, even if they say hi to us, they are still moving. So we generally go a little uh, with oh, them. Okay, and uh, then uh, when we start, they stop. Is that how? So now you say, now that's when you ask them a question. Because a question is a? Right, so if you want to catch somebody, you use a hook. So here's two hooks to use. So you're looking, you say hi, and they smile. They're still moving a little bit. They say, California, where are you from? Or Burlingame, where are you from? Chennai, where are you from? India, where are you from? And then they'll say such and such, right? Burlingame, where are you from? I'm from India. India? I love India. Now here's another hook. You see this? Watch. Watch this. Watch. It's irresistible. People can't resist this. When you put your fist out like this, it's a very non-committal handshake. And from across the street, sometimes I'll go like this, and people are like, ah, all right, and they'll come through, <laughs> through traffic, risking life and limb. It's like, okay, I got it. Because people want that. They want a little connection with, with another living entity, and you're going like, huh, huh, huh? Here I am. Come on now. And they're like, yeah, all right. You know. And, and so then, then once you get them over there, then um, you're, you're saying uh, where they're from and say, you know, you're from Illinois? You can ask them again, you're from, you're from India? You say, I love India. Great. This is from America to India. Books on yoga and meditation shows you how to get free from stress. You've heard of stress before and you're off with your presentation, which has intermittent questions, which holds the whole thing together. It's just like uh, when you put the yeast in a cake. You know, it holds the whole thing together. So the whole thing has, it's a structured house. It has all the questions and all the presentations that you need to um, live in a, in a decent house. Okay? So use the question as a hook. Like, so I'm from India. Where are you from? I'm from Illinois. Illinois? Are, are you serious? You're from Illinois? Ask him again. Yeah, fantastic. I love Illinois. Great. This is from Chennai to Illinois. Books on yoga and meditation shows how you get from stress. You've heard of stress before, right? Really, you don't look stressed. You look spiritual. What's your secret? You know, and you go on from there, and you're off and running. What else? What was the last question? Yes. Some people say that they have been reading Bible. So is there any way we can connect Bhagavad Gita to Bible? Sure. It's all about God. 
But the main thing is, when somebody says, I'm reading this or I'm reading that, they're saying, I already have something. So again, you honor the objection. So if someone says, I'm reading Bibles, I could tell, you look spiritual. That's one of the things that you tell people when they use a particular thing to tell you that they're not interested, basically. They say, I already, I already do this, I already do that, I already have this. And you're like, I know, I could tell by looking at you. You know, if there were more people like you in the world reading the Bible, it would be a better place to live. It's people of faith like you that are keeping the world afloat. So acknowledge immediately whatever uh, uh, designation or objection that they offer. You fully acknowledge it. You appreciate it. And then it leaves an opening for you to present what you have. Once you honor what they have, then you can present what you have. And if you reject it, that's just what they're resistant to. That everyone's walking around and they have a little protective shell around them because this is my identity, this is who I am, and if you challenge that and you don't honor it, they will not be open to what you have to offer. So you have to be beyond ecumenical. You have to be downright universal and appreciate where everybody's coming from. And that's one of the reasons that this is high sadhana. You have to develop that kind of vision and you have to extract the spirit from the matter. You have to extract the, the uh, pure devotion from the mixture of everything else that anybody has that's going on. And you'll find that little spark in there and you just fan it. And once you fan it, then miracles happen by Krishna's arrangement. Krishna's in there helping you. He's sitting in their heart going, yeah, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And they're like, who said that? You know, and like, you going, you take it. And Krishna's going, you take it. And they go, all right, I'll take it. You know? <laughs> so it's a transcendental process. It's a transcendental process. You have to depend on Krishna. You have to be ready for it. And you go out and you practice. And you'll see. It'll all come together. And it's like a symphony happening out there. And you'll realize that I'm part of something way bigger than myself. It's not all about me. There's five factors to every action. You go out and depend on Krishna and do the best you can, and Krishna will s supply the people. That's why you'll feel a relationship with the Lord by doing this kind of work. It's because like, uh, it's not me that's doing it. Krishna's arranging these things. I, I'm insignificant. I don't know how to do it. So now we have an opportunity to um, go out and touch the pavement. That means we're not going out distributing any books today. We're just going out to see if we can move from this place to the place that we're designated to go. And once we touch the pavement, then we're done for the day. Right, Moloney? And if you want to do, if you want to try anything after that, it's completely up to you and it's completely extra. No expectation of selling a book, performing, doing well. Just uh, feel free to have fun today. I must say that um, I have used this exact same lines that Vaisheshika Prabhu has given for all these years. I don't have any different presentation and every time it works. So I encourage all of you to try the exact same lines even though you have some different ones. Try that as Prabhu said. You'll see that it, it, is, it works all the time. Thank you so much Prabhu for giving us an enlivening session. Yes, yeah, she never asked for her money back. <laughs> Not to the armor man, 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 hey, not to the armor man, not to the armor man, not to the armor man, not to the armor man.